So let's talk about what a limit is a little bit. When we talk about a graph, and I know this seems like I'm jumping around a little bit, but when we look at a graph, sometimes we want to know um, about the slope of a line. Okay, And curves are not lines. They don't have slopes. But we can still talk about slope okay, by creating a line, right? connecting two points. Okay, So let me first give you, before we talk about lines and slopes, maybe let's back up a little bit. Let's look at a physics uh, approach to this. Okay, so we'll we'll think about what what uh, Newton might have been looking at. Suppose you're driving your car, and um, so so here I am in my car, and ooh, that's okay. We'll just say car. We'll just put a box. I can't draw. Okay, you're driving around along the road, and uh, somewhere down the road you see a police officer. Okay. And in that moment, it is very important to you uh, to know how fast your car is going. Okay. Now, we all know a way to figure out speed, right? So if you've taken a physics class, uh, speed is change in distance over change in time. Okay. So you're driving down the road, you see the police officer, and you want to know your speed. So, of course, what you do is you look at the nearest mile marker. You get out in maybe a stopwatch or, uh, you, know, a, you know, some sort of you know, way to, to keep time, maybe on your phone or something like that. You st start the stopwatch. You drive until you reach the next mile marker. You stop the stopwatch. You now have a, a known amount of distance that you traveled, a known amount of time. You bust out a calculator and divide them, and you know your speed, right? And I'm sure all of you, no, nobody's done that, right? So that, that's figuring out your speed averaged over this long distance. What if I want to know my speed right at one instant? Okay. Now you can say you look down at your speedometer, but how does it even make sense to have speed at a single instant if speed is a change in distance over change in time? What does that mean to have a speed at a single moment if there's no change in, in distance and no change in time? Okay. So that was what something that Newton wanted to address. How can we talk about speed at a single instant, um, it's an idea that makes sense to us, but looking at our math, it, it doesn't it doesn't work, right? So this is why we need to sort of make a, a little bit of a change. Okay, so here's what we can do. I can think of my car, right, as being, you know, on the road somewhere, and in the future, my car will be somewhere else. Okay, so we can think of this as time one, and at time two, okay, and there's some change in distance, and there's some change in time. But what if I shrink the amount of time it takes me to take my measurement, right? What if instead of waiting for like a full mile or something like that, what if I wait one millisecond, right? Right, and I have my car here, and I have this really short change in distance and a really short change in time. Okay, um, I could still figure out a speed. Now that would be averaged over a, a smaller length. It's still not my um, speed at a single instant, but I'm getting closer to it. Okay, and this is kind of the idea we want to look at. What if I take smaller and smaller gaps? Okay, now if I look at this change in distance over change in time. Right. If I if I look at think of my my position on a line, right? If I, if I make a line graph. Right. So here's maybe an x1 and an x2. Then my change in distance is just the difference of those. Okay. Maybe instead of calling those x values, just for the sake of what we're going to be doing in a minute, let, let's call our distance y values. Okay. And then I have some time values. So at time t1 and at time t2. OK, so over t2 minus t1. And when I look at this formula, x2 minus, or if I change these to y's now, again, it doesn't really matter. But 
it'll look a little bit more familiar. So y2 minus y1 over t2 minus t1, or if instead of t I use the variable x, then you would look at that and say that looks exactly like slope. Okay, so what we can do is we can think of this as being like slope um, of a line, and that allows us to kind of take away some of this extra context. We don't have to think about cars and motion and stuff. I can just look at, you know, a graph and a line and, and keep things maybe a little bit simpler. Okay, and so that, that's where we get to this idea where, you know, solving the, the problem of how do I find my, my speed or velocity at a single instant is the same as how do I find... Uh, you know, slope of a line to a graph at a single point. Okay, so finding instantaneous velocity is the same as finding slope at a single point. Okay, so now let's look at a graph and slope, and maybe this will make a little bit more sense. If I look at my graph of some function, right, so this blue line here is my function y equals f of x. Okay, so that's my function f. And we'll say that a is the relevant place that I want to find something, okay? So if I pick A and I pick another point on the graph, I can connect them with a line and I can find the slope of that line, okay? And so the slope of that line connecti connecting these two points uh, gives me some information about what's going on at A. We call it a secant line to A. And what we really want, our goal is to say, well, there is some line that we'll call the tangent line at A. Okay, that's what we really want to know about, but that's kind of hard to figure out. So right now we look at these secant lines. Okay. And what we can do is we can say, well, if I think of these two points, right, if I get closer, if I make my second point closer to A, maybe really, really close, then my secant line is going to be indistinguishable from my tangent line. And that's really what, we're, what our goal is, right? We're going to say, all right, let's take secant lines that get closer and closer to that tangent line. So here we have a second secant line drawn in, right, at a point closer. And you'll notice that the secant line has changed, and it looks like it's getting closer to what I'm imagining to be my, my tangent line. Okay. And so solving the tangent line problems, what we're doing is we're, we can think of this as taking a bunch of secant lines as they get closer and closer to my point A. So let's, let's look at an example here. Let's suppose that I have my function f of x is x squared. And let's suppose that 1, 1 is my relevant point. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is the point I care about. Okay, so what I can do is I can say, well, let's, let's look at what is the secant line um, between this point of interest and some other points. Okay. And so I can, I'm going to make a little chart here. Okay. So I'm going to say, all right, um, we're going to pick another x value. Okay. And that's going to give me an f of x. And then that's going to give me a slope. So first I'm going to pick 2. If I plug 2 into my function, 2 squared is 4. Okay, and now slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But my first point, right, my x1, y1 is, is the point 1, 1. So I can always think of this as being like f of x minus 1 over x minus 1. So I plug in my 2 and my 4, 
and I get 3 over 1, which is 3. Okay. Now let's plug in something that's closer to 1. So we plug in 3 halves. Okay. When I square that, I get 9 fourths. So then my slope is going to be 9 fourths minus 1 over 3 halves minus 1. Okay, 9 fourths minus 1 is 9 fourths minus 4 fourths, which is 5 fourths. 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half. 5 fourths divided by a half is 5 fourths uh, times 2, which is 5 halves. Okay. Um, this might be easier if we just look at it as a decimal. Say 2.5. Okay. We'll do the next, for the next one, I'll, I'll just do a decimal. What if, what if I pick my x value to be 1.1? 1 .1? Okay, and then I'll get out my calculator. Say, okay, 1.1 squared is 1.21. Okay, and then the slope is 1.21 minus 1 over 1.1 minus 1. Okay, so I get 0.21 over 0.1. I think that comes out to 2.1. And we'll do one more. What if I look at super, super close to 1? 1. 1.001. Okay. 1.001 squared is 1.002001. So then my slope would be 1.002001 minus 1 all over 1.001 minus 1. And I get 2.001. Okay. What if I come from the other side? What if instead of looking at secant lines where the second point is to the right, what if it's from the left? What if I look at something close to 1 but smaller than 1, right? Say 0 0.99. Right? If I take 0 0.99 and square it, I get 0 0.9801. Okay. And if I look at a slope for that, 0 0.9801 minus 1 over 0.99 minus 1. Again, I'll let my calculator do the work for me. And I get 1.99. Okay, what can we get from all of this? I want to think about whether or not there's a pattern, right? When I my lines get, as my, as my x values get closer and closer to 1, What's happening to the slopes? It looks like they're getting closer and closer to two. Okay, so based on this, it looks like it looks like the slope of the tangent line is two. Okay, now. It's not really obvious from what we did that it's exactly 2 instead of maybe like 2 and 1 billionth, right? Or 1.9999972, right? Um, but that's okay. We're not going to keep doing this forever. We have, we're going to have a better method. We just want to have an idea for what's going on. And this is, this is what's called the tangent line problem. And once we figure out a way to do this um, algebraically, then we'll be able to compute the slope of the tangent line exactly, and we'll be able to answer the question, how is it that I can know my, my speed at a single instant, right? Do I have a way of looking at that mathematically? And, and the answer is yes. And, okay. and, and that's what the idea of a limit's going to be. The idea of a limit is what happens as I get closer and closer to a number, right? What, what happens to things like this slope or, or, you know, a function or something like that? Okay, this is one side of calculus, um, and this is what we're going to be looking at in... Um, chapters 3 and 4. In chapter 5, we're going to be looking at something else, the area problem.